So, the Galil. Alternatively known as the IDF Defender in previous iterations of Counter-Strike, the Galil has always been a part of the terrorist arsenal in stark contrast to the CT's Vamos. Unfortunately these days, both budget assault rifles seem to have seen a dip in competitive usage, as the meta has shifted towards favoring even more cost-effective options in the way of SMGs or pistol armor. However, with the somewhat recent range nerfs to the UMP, things are starting to look a bit better for the budget assault rifles. No! <laughs> of course, while the UMP is still amazing in CQC, the range nerf has at least stopped it from also being used as a $1200 rifle. Because of this, we are starting to see a steady increase in the usage of budget assault rifles in the new competitive meta. Well, actually it's mostly just an increase for the FAMAS, as Galil buys still seem few and far between. But why haven't more people begun using the Galil? Is it really not worth the investment? Or are other options still just too good to pass up? I mean, it is. The cheapest costing assault rifle in CSGO. Now, before we get into the bulk of this breakdown discussion, we first need to take a quick look at some weapon statistics. As usual, I won't be discussing all of the Galil's weapon statistics, but just the ones I find to be important and or interesting. As always, all of the statistics used today can be found via Sloth Squadron spreadsheet, which will be linked in the description box below. So, to start things off, at only $2,000, the Glil is clearly the cheapest assault rifle in CSGO, filling the role of budget assault rifle for the T side. Now, as a budget AR, it is rather surprising to see that the Galil maintains the largest rifle magazine size at 35 bullets with 90 in reserve. Nevertheless, these bullets do contain a rather mediocre raw damage of about 30 damage per bullet. However, the Galil's armor penetration is unexpectedly good, as it beats both the FAMAS and M4s with an AP value of about 77.5, the same as an AK-47. A few other AK similarities include the somewhat slower rifle mobility at 215, surface penetration power at 200%, and a favorably low damage drop-off at only 2%. As for differences, the Galil enjoys a boosted fire rate of about 666, faster than the AK-47, but average in comparison to almost every other assault rifle. Unfortunately, this mediocre boost in average rifle fire rate seems to have come at a cost, as the Galil not only maintains the slowest T-side rifle reload time at about 3.03 seconds, but is the only T-side rifle that cannot one-shot helmeted enemies. Truthfully though, those issues are not nearly as bad as they sound as the Galil's reload time is still faster than most other CT rifles, and inadequate one-shot lethality has always been a thing for CTs in general. On the bright side, at least against helmetless enemies, the Galil does manage to almost double the fatal headshot range of both the FAMAS and the AUG. But honestly, any fatal range of over 2500 is probably more than enough against unarmored opponents considering pit to barrels is about 2,048 units. Anyways, when factoring in its base damage, fire rate, and more, the Galil ends up with a decent raw DPS of 322, matching both the FAMAS and SG-553. When factoring in armor penetration, the Galil's DPS maintains a respectable output of 250 against armor, surpassing both the FAMAS and either M4s. Sadly, accuracy values are a different story. Now, like usual, in the interest of time I've condensed all of the assault rifles standing, crouching, and running inaccuracies for ease of comparison. So superficially, the Galil's inaccuracy statistics seem pretty bad in most aspects, with both the second worst standing inaccuracy of 9.37 and the second worst crouching inaccuracy of 7.18. Of course, while these values are not terrible in the grand scheme of things, they are noticeably worse than the M4s and AK-47s. In addition, like most rifles, the Galil also has a fairly bad running inaccuracy of 132. Again, any inaccuracy over 100 is 
pretty much unusable, except for extreme cases of CQC. But even with these rather poor AR inaccuracies, the Galil is at least more accurate than the FAMAS. Or is it? Although the Galil's base inaccuracy for both standing and crouching are slightly better than the FAMAS's, we have yet to consolidate how recoil and firing inaccuracy affect these values. Now, although the Galil has a rather decent recoil value of 21, it contains the worst inaccuracy from firing at 8.78, with the worst recovery times when both standing and crouching. Because of this, the Galil is actually less accurate than the FAMAS when shooting in rapid succession. While the Galil does possess a smaller first shot in accuracy, the addition of firing inaccuracy to each successive bullet increases its inaccuracy values to eventually become the worst for all assault rifles in the game. This problem is only made worse by the Galil's relatively complex spray pattern. While the pattern itself may not seem too difficult on paper, controlling it in-game is another story. Now, of course, horizontal compensation is generally accepted to be harder to manage than vertical recoil, but putting that aside, even if you've managed to master the Galil's complete spray pattern, the amount of firing inaccuracy added to each consecutive shot makes the spray wildly unpredictable after the first couple of bullets. With that said, how should you use the Galil? Well, with the largest assault rifle magazine size and an improved rate of fire over the AK-47, it makes sense to believe that the Galil ought to be used as a spray and pray weapon. Of course, while haphazardly spraying is certainly viable and even preferred in some CQC situations, the weapon itself is extremely hard to spray and control when firing from long to even medium ranges. As we've seen, the Galil's base accuracy combined with its compounding firing inaccuracy make the weapon extremely difficult to predict and compensate for with its wide shifts in accuracy RNG. Without significant time and practice put into using the Galil, spraying carelessly is basically a crapshoot. Admittedly, the Galil's firing inaccuracy does taper off around the 12th bullet or so, theoretically making it easier to control, but again, it's still the highest AR inaccuracy value combined with the hardest portion of the spray to control. With that in mind, for most people who rarely ever use the Galil, I would highly suggest firing in bursts or even tapping outside of CQC range. Even with its poor inaccuracy and reset time, the first three bullets out of a Galil are reasonably accurate, and with a 77.5% armor penetration and 2% damage drop-off, the Galil actually outdamages the FAMAS and can even properly compete against M4s at longer ranges. Now, I should point out that I use the word burst rather loosely. Bursting, to me, can be anywhere from 3 to 10 shots. It's confusing, I know. But the distinction I make between bursting and spraying is that spraying uses up at least 50 to 100% of a weapon's magazine. Having said that, I know a few of you are wondering, okay, so just how many rounds should I burst with? Well, that really depends. Obviously, the further away you are from the target, the less bullets you want to expend and vice versa. But a good rule of thumb that I like to use is 3 for long range, up to 10 for medium, and spray when close. I know up to 10 sounds pretty vague, but that's actually the moment when the Galil spray pattern starts to noticeably drift horizontally instead of vertically. That, combined with the weapon's aforementioned inaccuracy issues, make it a pretty good reset point in my opinion. Honestly, medium range in particular seems to be the most difficult range to effectively use the Galil. Because of its almost random firing nature, you're constantly gambling with how many bullets to burst with before resetting your crosshairs or overcommitting to a full RNG spray. Not only does this take a tremendous amount of experience, game sense, and most importantly luck, but almost every other assault rifle seems to have a much easier time holding a decent spray at medium ranges. Of course, with the frequency of medium ranged firefights and competitive matchmaking, it's no wonder why people seem to have such a difficult time using the Galil, especially when trying to spray with it. While that's definitely a large part of the reason why most people leave their Galils on the shelf, the biggest and probably most obvious reason is... Yep, you guessed it, 
its inability to one-shot helmeted enemies. That, and for only 700 bucks more, you could have bought an AK-47. Which begs the question, when should you buy a Galil? Long ago, the Galil and FAMAS lived in harmony, happily contributing as the standard loadout for anti-eco rounds. But then, everything changed when the SMGs received their buffs shifting the meta away from budget rifles in favor of the strongest SMG in CSGO. Even to this day, with the increase in popularity of forcing pistol armor, the UMP still remained the weapon of choice on many anti-eco rounds. Still, to be fair, the range nerfs to the UMP have had an impact on its dominant usage, as there does seem to be a larger amount of players picking up the FAMAS in competitive play. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said for the Galil. While I still believe that the Galil is a decent weapon choice as an anti-eco or anti-save weapon, most people tend to avoid it completely when choosing a rifle, opting to buy straight into the AK-47. And I can't really blame them. Assuming they play intelligently enough to not immediately lose their AKs to pistol armor, the Galil really doesn't have all that much to offer over the AK-47 in most anti-eco situations. Sure, it's $700 cheaper, but if you were planning on saving money or building bank, you would have bought an SMG. Honestly, because of how easily T-Side builds up economy, in combination with how cheap their main assault rifles tend to be, it makes sense why people tend to skip over the Galil on either side of the price spectrum especially when planning on upgrading in the next round. That being said, I do think there are rounds where the Galil shines, specifically on the dreaded MM Force Buy round. So, assuming you have around $3,000 to work with after losing a round, you're probably not going to buy an AK-47 without armor, or at least not for yourself. But you should consider picking up a $2,000 Galil with full Kevlar helmet. Of course, while it's still very effective to force a UMP or pistol armor, having at least one person forcing a Galil drastically improves your team's weapon utility by providing extra firepower for either dueling or supporting at longer distances. Again, while the UMP slash pistol armor are undoubtedly great in CQC, they limit the amount of options you have when challenging certain bomb sites, especially with the recent range nerfs to the UMP. However, by buying a Galil, you not only provide more consistent covering fire, but you also become more effective at playing picks or dueling at range. As we've seen, the Galil is a pretty solid rifle for ranged duels, outdamaging popular anti-eco weapons like the FAMAS and UMP at longer distances. Not only that, but it's also surprisingly good against M4s in similar situations, especially if the enemy forgoes buying a helmet in an attempt to save money. Because of this, I would say the Galil is also a decent weapon to drop poverty-stricken teammates, as its cheap and flat rate make it easier to calculate expenses. Sadly, with the current meta as it is, you may be better off dropping them a UMP. But for those of you who are confident in using the Galil, don't hesitate to buy it in any situation where the AK-47 is unfeasible. Sometimes it's better to buy a budget rifle with full utility instead of spending all your money on just a rifle with armor. Sure, sacrificing one-shot lethality may sound terrible, but remember, CSGO is a team-oriented game, and proper utility in the way of smokes, flashes, and mollies can make all the difference between a win and a loss. So, in conclusion, the Galil may not have the most consistent spray, best overall accuracy, or highest damage statistics, but it's just good enough to give it the edge over relevant competition when used appropriately. Of course, while the T-side economy may favor skipping over the Galil in many anti-eco situations, it still maintains a solid role in force buy or support weapon scenarios. Nonetheless, one of the major factors holding back the Galil from widespread adoption is its high firing and accuracy in combination with a rather difficult spray pattern. As easy as it may be to use for CQC or long-ranged engagements, it's still quite difficult to use consistently at medium ranges. Even so, I do believe the Galil to be a better budget assault rifle than its CT counterpart. Not only because of its damage and price, but because the Galil works much better in the traditional sense, 
as a ranged dueling weapon. It's just a shame that it almost seems counterintuitive with its 35 bullet magazine. Like, who would have guessed that the Galil is better tapping at range, while the FAMAS is better spraying up close? Now, I'm not necessarily saying that the Galil needs a buff, in fact, I'd rather the UMP receive another nerf, but I would like to see some statistical changes to better indicate its ranged efficiency. So, basically, put a scope on it. Go back to Call of Duty! No, seriously, did you know that the Galil originally came with a scope back in the old CSGO alpha days? Well, that is the Galil, yeah. And it has a zoom on it, the Galil? Wow, that's something I didn't know. <laughs> Not even joking. I would absolutely love it if Valve released a scoped Galil variant with maybe a reduced magazine size. But in the end, that's just my opinion. There's no way I covered everything, and all of this is just advice. So what do you guys think about the Galil? Is it worth picking up now that the UMP is sorta of nerfed? Or is it better left alone to continue collecting dust? Does it need a buff to increase its competitive relevance, or do other weapons need to be further nerfed? Well, whatever the case, it's still the cheapest costing assault rifle in CSGO.